Happy Sunday and welcome back to my channel. So we are in my living room. So over the next week or so, I'm gonna be completely transforming my living room. And here's why. All of the furniture has come from previous apartments that we've lived in. So each of these pieces we've had for about eight years. Couch, the coffee table, the side tables on both sides, the chair, the TV. So the only real thing that's new is the rug and the pillows. So the couch is the biggest issue in this room. It's a couch with the chase on the right hand side but because of the way that it's laid out there's windows along two walls on one wall it's all doors either with a door or just an opening to another part of the house and then one wall has a mock fireplace it's just very limiting the couch can only really go on one wall and there are a couple of things in this room that we're just not willing to compromise on big comfy cloud couch aren't willing to compromise on the size of our tv so there you have it those things are not changing so we're gonna make this rental work while also investing in furniture that can be easily transferred into our next home the couch shape that we really need in this space is an L-shaped couch. And I wanted to go with something that was modular, that the pieces could be kind of moved around like a puzzle piece so that if we were to move, I could move the left side to the right side. Huge thank you to Article for sponsoring this video and sending me literally the couch of my dreams. But in order to get that couch in here, we have to get rid of this couch. Romeo's sister is actually searching for a new couch right now and I was like, oh, we're getting a new one. You want mine? So she's gonna come get this tonight. So the inspiration for the living room is a neutral color palette, but I want black details running throughout the space and loads of texture. Everywhere you look in the room, I want there to be a really, really beautiful neutral texture. And also I want the space to feel very bright, but also warm at the same time. It has been a few days. We are couchless. Today is the day. It's actually coming today. It's being delivered. So there are a few things in the living room that I want to tackle before the couch gets here that involves paint. So I had a dream that I painted this window, not the trim, around the window, just inside black. <laughs> and I kind of want to do it. So I started by unscrewing and removing all of the blinds. This window is actually pretty large, so there were four separate blind panels, and they're super easy to remove. I also removed all of the hardware because I'm going to be obviously painting underneath and then reattaching them. There were so many layers of bad paint jobs on these windows that I actually had to take a razor and get a lot of the paint off the glass around all of the edges. This is somewhat of a tedious process but it's so worth it to have a more polished finished look. Next I took a sander and a sanding block for parts of the framing that's closer to the glass so I don't scratch it and Romeo helped me and we tackled sanding down as much as we could getting most of the paint off and then I filled the holes from the blinds just with some putty. Sanding the windows made such a mess that I really wanted to clean everything up, get everything wiped down before starting to paint. So I just took a dry cloth and wiped down all of the windows around each glass and we cleaned out some of the furniture that isn't gonna be going back into the space. Okay, we're ready to start painting it black. And I, I love how controversial <laughs> me painting this window is about to be because some people are gonna love it. Some people might hate it, but that's okay. Because if no one ever tries new things out, or not new things, but like things out, we'll never know what really looks good. So the color, we're doing tricorn black with a satin finish. I usually do eggshell for walls and then satin for trim. Instead of this process taking forever by taping off each individual window, we're not doing that. I'm gonna be using a straight edge trick where we're gonna be putting the straight edge against the window along the piece that we're actually gonna paint and then just painting it and moving it to the next spot and continue painting. We just have to make sure that we're cleaning this. Painting this window was pretty time consuming. I mean, there were a lot of panes in the glass to go around and I actually did do two coats of the black paint. I didn't prime it because the windows were already white so I figured I could get away with it but I did do two coats of black paint. The straight edge trick was pretty cool. I've done this once before, but these were just so many panes of glass that it was a lot to go around. But since I had to do two coats, I don't know how big of a time saver it actually was. It may have been quicker to just go ahead and put the tape down. You guys, I still have one more coat to go like on the insides of each pane. I am obsessed 
with this look. But just like this small detail is totally transforming the room. The white all looked really dated to me. I guess they didn't remove the latches before actually painting the last couple of times. So I just used some citrus stripping gel to get that paint off. So I let it sit for about 10 minutes and then put on some gloves and used a paper towel to just wipe that paint off. And it came off really easily and it looks really good. And then I just screwed the latches back onto the windows. Wow, what a huge difference this makes. I know I'm kind of shooting into the sunlight here, but already just this small detail, just going over the trim in black makes a huge modern update to this space. And because this window has the black versus the blinds that we had before and it being all white, it kind of helps to separate this space, create a barrier between the entryway and the living room. In my last living room makeover, you guys actually suggested that I should paint the inside of my fireplace black to make it look more like a fireplace and to give it kind of a matte effect like a fireplace. I'm using a black chalkboard paint. It was actually a cheaper alternative than buying flat black paint from the hardware store. And I didn't need to do two coats on this, I just did one. The couch is here and it's taking up the entire entryway. <laughs> Uh, I can't wait to show you guys. So we got this Soleil modular sofa in a chill white color and it's in four pieces because I wanted an L-shaped couch. An article has beautiful modern furniture for just about any space in your home. Their furniture is super high quality and with them that quality comes at a great price. You can shop all of Article's pieces online and they're shipping with contactless delivery right now. So it was super safe for everyone involved. The delivery guys brought the boxes right up to my front door and then I was able to bring them inside. All of the items that Article has in stock deliver super fast and they ship to almost anywhere in the United States and Canada for a flat rate of $49 and then free shipping on orders over $999. Once we got all the pieces in place, we were able to hook the legs together so that the couch wouldn't slide around. I love the low seating and the low profile of this couch and it's got this soft Belgian fabric, beautiful and clean looking, but also really comfortable. And what I love most is it's fully modular. We can simply rearrange these pieces to fit any space. So if you're searching for a new piece for your home, definitely check out article. I'm gonna leave a link in the description box so that you guys can. It's perfect. If we needed an L couch in here really bad. I feel like we're getting to a point where the living room is finally becoming what it should have always been. So much to do, but I'm so excited. The space is already turning out so amazing. So will we see them in the morning? We have had both of our TVs, this one in the living room and the bedroom for years and our bedroom TV just started to kind of go out. It's not doing so well. We're gonna be moving this TV into the bedroom and then give us an opportunity to get a new TV that actually fits this space a little better. We got the Samsung frame TV. This will make it look like it's a piece of art on the wall rather than a black hole. Now, since this TV is gonna be a lot lighter, we can actually mount it on the wall. We spent the next hour, two hour and a half, making sure that this TV was gonna be perfectly straight because there is nothing worse than a crooked TV. So we just found the studs, screwed in the mount that comes with the TV and hung it up. And I love this size. It fits so much better in this space. Next, there were always some places on this mantle that had little, blemishes. So I just took some caulk and filled in those spaces and gave the whole mantle where it was white, just a fresh coat of paint. And just that small detail, just cleaning up the white paint made such a huge improvement. I'm being incredibly particular about curtain texture and pillows that go in here. And I actually made these pillows for my bed from linen European grain sack. I really like the sizing in here, but I want a particular fabric. So I picked up some fabric swatches of ones that I kind of liked that I thought would go well. When I have this many options, I start taking out what I don't like. I already know that I don't like this one because it's really gauzy, overly textured, and doesn't feel very modern to me. So I don't like that. Too loose, even though I really like this. It's too gauzy too. Too yellow, not sheer enough for what I want. It's a little thick. Wow, I'm eliminating fast. Okay, this one is pretty stiff. I don't think it's gonna hang right or feel very great as a pillow. All right, so we have two. We actually really like both of these. So now I need to decide if I want the pillows light or dark or vice versa for the curtains. I feel like when in doubt, always go lighter with curtains just so I don't want the room to feel heavy or dark. And then go dark on the pillows. 
So I headed back to FNS Fabrics, which is my favorite home fabric store in Los Angeles. So if you guys are local, definitely check them out. They are so, so sweet. They have the best selection and tell Jamie I said hi. I ended up getting five and a half yards for the linen for the curtains and then three yards of the linen for the pillows. So once I got home, it was time to make the curtains. Curtains are pretty straightforward. You just need to hem the sides, make a loop at the top, and hem the bottom. So always a rule of thumb, you want your curtains to go all the way as high as they can and as low to the floor as they can. Before sewing any seams, I always like to press down my seam allowance. It makes it so much easier to sew. You know that you're gonna get a really, really clean hem as well. So I just did a half an inch on each of the sides, an inch hem down at the bottom, and then you need to know how big your rod is to make the loop at the top. So my wasn't very thick it was about an inch so I did a three inch looped hem at the top to slide the pull through and my trick is to hem the sides first and then go back and do your top and your bottom I found this really sleek double pole rod from Amazon and I'll link it for you guys. I love it because I actually want the option to go back and add a sheerer piece of fabric closer to the window if we want to open it and still have some sunlight pour in just for privacy. I also like that this is a wraparound rod so it is complete privacy. The curtains go all the way back to the wall and it's in a matte black finish that goes with the rest of the decor that I'm doing in the room. After we got the curtains hung, I went back and steamed all of the panels to make them hang really flat and steam out the hems to make them straighter. The curtains with the black windows with the L-shaped couch is starting to make this feel like a separate part of the room from the entryway, which is what I really wanted. So now it's time for art and I really wanna do art on both sides of the TV. I want the size of these to be large and dramatic-esque. These plywood pieces already come in two by four. So two foot by four foot. I felt like it was kind of the perfect size to hang on each side of the fireplace. And to frame them out on the back, I'm just gonna be using this one by two piece of wood right behind like this and make a box, create the framing in the box behind it. So in addition to the wood, you're just gonna need some joint compound, a palette knife, and also paints in the color that you want your art to be. I started by measuring out two foot and four foot pieces and took it outside to cut the wood for our framing behind our piece of plywood. This should be a super straightforward process. I'm just gonna use some what would I have? I have some panel nails that are an inch long and then I have finishing nails. We're gonna cover this whole thing with joint compounds so you're not gonna see what you're building with. <laughs> so just use whatever you have. And I actually want the frame to be thicker. I'm gonna do it like this so it's a lot thicker. I think it'll look more expensive that way. Place our forefoot here and nail it in. Plan B, I really don't want to hammer all of those in. I don't want to hammer all those in. I'm gonna screw it in. But ideally we would use like nails so it's more flush. Next up is the joint compound application. So the joint compound is already pre-mixed so it's wet and ready to apply. So we're just gonna take some and just rough texture it on there. You just want kind of like texture that's going every which direction. Okay, so the first layer is pretty much dry. And I did notice that on the second one that I made, it was a little more smooth in some places versus the first one was like a lot more textured. The second layer, I'm gonna do it a little more smooth to kind of balance out the look. So now we're gonna move on to color. I created this sandy neutral color by mixing Nomadic Desert and White Gallery. And this is just acrylic latex paint that you get from the hardware store. And then added some joint compound in there to make it that thicker kind of plaster type material, that drywall material, and then just wiped it on. There's no method to this. I just went wherever I felt the color needed to be, giving it really rough texture. And then I created another batch of paint that was a little lighter than the last, but not pure white, just to kind of add dimension. Later on that night, I went back and trimmed it in black because I wanted the edges to be kind of dramatic and the picture to not look like it was floating. It's when I just went directly onto the piece of art with the tricorn black color we did on the windows. I feel like the room has a great kind of like neutral palette right now and my style lends a little more 
neutral with some warm tones so I really want to warm it up in some way and I'm not really into marble anymore I've had this coffee table and that side table for years my dad actually made me that side table just the iron part and just set some marble in it to match this coffee table the marbles just resting on top so we could simply just DIY a new topper for it and then maybe I can do something else with this marble so I headed off to the hardware store and I grabbed some plywood and also some four by one pieces of wood and although it would be a super easy DIY to just lay the plywood down cut all the wood to size and just lay it down in straight panels I want to do it a little different I'm thinking about making a pattern with it and then we'll have to do some angled cuts on the edges to make the edges obviously rectangle so let's head outside and cut some wood so I started by cutting our piece of plywood to the exact size that I needed for the coffee table. I measured like four times. <laughs> and then we're gonna be creating our design with this four by one piece of wood. I'm just kind of laying the wood down, marking where I need to cut it and cutting one piece at a time. So I kind of thought of it as a, as a puzzle I was working on, creating the pattern that I wanted and just using my miter saw to cut those angles so that they all fit into a rectangle shape. And then I just used some wood glue to glue the, each, each of these pieces down to the piece of plywood. I found that it was getting a little difficult to use the miter saw for these cuts, so I switched over to using my circular saw. I was worried about it in the beginning not being able to do it exactly straight, but once I got the hang of it, I did think that it was easier to use the circular saw over the miter saw. I also got this smaller wood, thinner wood, just to kind of make this edge look more presentable. So I'm going to be using some wood glue and probably some brad nails to just glue it to the sides here. Once the pattern was all complete, I just went back in any imperfections I had around the edges. I just used a stainable wood filler to fill in those gaps and make it smooth and then sanded it down. So for staining it, I really wanted to match a bookshelf that I have in my entryway and English chestnut was the closest that I could get and, and I really wanted to tie those two spaces together. So I just stained the whole thing in English chestnut and I'm loving how this came out. I love the pattern, it's so cool. To finish it off, I used a polycrylic sealer which has a flat finish to it and I actually did three coats. The next day, it was time to style the living room and put in our new toppers. So we moved the heavy marble out and moved in the new coffee table topper and I love it. It warms up the space so much. For the side table, it didn't do anything intricate or any intricate design. I just did a straight piece of wood stained in the same color. And I made two for the top and the shelf. Oh, I feel like cords are always such a big struggle. I think I got it pretty good. The whole bottom shelf of this little side table has become storage for electronics, which I think it's okay because it's on the side by the wall. I've worked a lot on these art pieces and I, they're still not quite where I want them to be, but I feel like the best plan at this point is to get them up on the wall. These paintings were definitely on the challenging side. My friend Cassidy from Life Simplified over on Instagram does some beautiful beautiful art like this. So if you didn't want to do a DIY, she does some amazing ones. I'll leave her store link so that you guys can check them out. Let's hang them and then we'll move on. So I kept this original chair that I had in the living room because I really like it and it has lots of texture. So I wanted to put it in place before hanging the artwork. And then I just measured where's the center of the wall, put two picture hanging nails up and hung them up. Because I have the curtains on the other side, it's always gonna look a little more crowded on that side, but the art still needed to be the same dimension. I found this iron black lamp at World Market, but I really couldn't find a shade that I liked. This one is like an open weave. It's got plastic on it still, but. I do like the base, so we might have to go on a search for a new lampshade for. Uh, okay, let's talk pillows and chunky knit blankets, cause you know, why not? This chunky knit blanket is actually from the Target Casa Luna collection. They have really pretty colors. I love that it's neutral, but it's also gonna add lots of texture to the couch. And I made 
three of these pillows. I have a full tutorial on my channel of how I made these pillows for my bedroom. So if you guys wanna check out that video and make some for yourself, you can. I love that they're warmer than the couch and the curtains, but in the same family. Also found these beautiful, I fell in love with these at Home Goods. Loved that these had like texture and the taupey kind of beige and black that we were bringing in here. Look, the regular tag on it, $68 regularly, and I got them for $24.99. Oh, that would be so pretty. Kids, do you like them? I love all the textures together with the curtain linens and then all of the pillows and the throw. It just adds so much warmth while still being really light and neutral. Here on the mantle, I really wanted to do some of our ceramic stone-like hack that we did in the last video with some baking soda and paint. If you guys saw my flea market vlog, I found this mirror <laughs> and it's so pretty. I got it for $30. It was like a really good shape to either stand alone or be put in the gallery wall, but it might look good here. It's a big enough size wall that it actually needs something. And it'll also help to tie in some of this like gold kind of vintage warm look that I have in the entryway because it's like obviously right next to it. I also got this pretty basket at World Market. It was $39.99, but it was really pretty. I like that you could see inside the basket. For coffee table decor, I wanted to add in some of my coffee table books and then build on top of those books with some of the faux ceramic pieces that I made in the last video. Also a candle with a gold rim to tie some of the gold from the mirror that we hung on the other side of the room. And then just to add some more texture and another layer, I added in this beaded rope that I got from the Rose Bowl flea market a while back. And I felt like this smaller ceramic dish was perfect for some Palo Santo wood and just a few matches, adding even more texture. For this little area right at the end of the couch, I definitely want something. I found this super cool cabinet while thrift shopping and it had shelves in the door. And I was hoping that there were, I've done some research and I was hoping that there was a specific name for this type and style of furniture, even though I know that this isn't antique, this is a, a reproduction. I'm actually gonna be doing a special project with this coming soon. So much needed modifications to it because it's very, a little bit wobbly. I felt like that was gonna be a perfect place for it. But for now, I can put it there and then when it's redone, I will reveal it to you guys. And then I wanted to feel like one of the magazine spreads that I've been so inspired by and I foraged my own little branch from my backyard to add to this face on the coffee table. And Kinsley watched as I lit our new candle and we're all done.
you guys enjoyed this makeover. This room feels so completely different. It's so nice to finally have a couch that actually fits the space. All the DIYs, it just really warmed up the space and also made it look more elevated and a little more elegant if I do say so myself. But there are definitely some things in this room that I still wanna work on. I'm gonna live with the art for a little bit. Go back and add a little bit of gray. I may go back and just kind of like wash out the black that's on the front. Also ordered a vintage Turkish rug, a three by five rug because my initial idea in here was to layer two rugs together. It's coming on Tuesday. So follow me on Instagram or the vlog as well if you guys want to see me kind of like play around with that rug and see if it goes in the space and another thing that i'm going to add is a table behind the couch i feel like right when you walk into the entryway it would be great to have an entryway table there behind the couch to not only protect the couch from getting dirty on the back side but also for our keys for small stuff i love it i hope you guys enjoyed the process if you are not already subscribed to my channel i post new room makeovers thrift flips, DIYs for any style of home every Sunday. So hit that subscribe button and the little bell notification and I will see you guys next week. Bye guys. Kinsley's out. Kinsley's knocked out. She's like, room makeover's over, I'm tired. Are you the sleepiest of girls? Oh, do you love it? You look so cozy.